here we're going to finish off where where we left off from the previous video uh, in which we had our three-parter. We showed the two things that we gave up, the one thing that we received. We put in the three accounts for those three things, what kind of accounts, whether there was increase or decrease. And we figured out that an increase in a liability is a credit, increase in an asset is a debit, and a decrease in an asset is a credit. So before we can answer do the debits equal the credits, if we just look at this, we see that we have two credits and one debit. Well, two credits do not equal one debit. So when we have a compound entry or a three-parter, um, then we need to use the numbers, okay? So um, for accounts payable, what we owe out to the vendor was $1,200. For the equipment itself was $1,500. The amount of cash that we paid as a down payment was $300. So if I take a look at uh, my debits, I have $1,500. If I take a look at my credits, I have a $300 and I have a $1,200, which also equals $1,500. So I have 1,500 in credits and 1,500 in debits. So I can say, yes, that balances, okay? But whenever I have a compound entry or three-parter, you have to also have the numbers. You have to make sure that your debits, the numbers of your debits equals the numbers of your credits. If you just have one debit and one credit, then you're good to go without having to worry about the numbers. Okay, we have here a transaction where we paid uh, for the use of employees. And so we use cash and wages expense. Cash is an asset, wages expense is an expense. We have less cash because we paid it out. We have more use of the employee, so that's an increase. So now we need to figure out our debits and credits. I have an increase in an expense and a decrease in an asset. So I look up expense is here. Do we have an increase? Yes, so that will be a debit. An increase in expense will be a debit. I have a decrease in an asset. So I look at asset, I say, do I have an increase? No, I have a decrease, which is opposite. So I'm gonna use opposite of debit, that will be credit. Okay, so my increase in an expense is a debit, and my decrease in an asset is a credit. I have one debit and one credit, so yes, they balance. On the next transaction, again, we have what appears to be a three-parter. So this time, instead of putting it in three parts like I did up here with the equipment, I went ahead and broke it into two parts, which you can always do. So here I showed just the services we sold for cash. And then on the next transaction on the next page, I, I split out the services that we sold on account. Okay. So here is just the cash part. So we received cash. In exchange, we sold our services. So for cash, I'll use cash. For sold services is a revenue. And so that's delivery fees, which is a revenue. Cash is an asset. Do we have more or less cash? We have more cash than we did five minutes ago, and we sold more services than five minutes ago. So I have an increase in an asset and an increase in a revenue. So I go up here and I have asset, increase is a debit, and revenue, increase is a credit. I have one debit and one credit, so that balances. So now I go on to page three. 
Okay, and this is the other part of that transactions where we sold services on account, means the customer owes us. We did not receive cash today for those customers. Okay, so whenever customers owe us, we use accounts receivable. And of course, we use delivery fees, a revenue account for sold services. So again, accounts receivable is an asset. We will receive it in the future. It's still our money today. It's just in the customer pocket. And we have delivery fees as revenue. The customers owe us more than they did five minutes ago, and we sold more services than we did five minutes ago. So both of these are increases. I have an increase in an asset and an increase in revenue. Okay, and so I go to asset, an increase is a debit, and revenue, increase is a credit. I have one debit and one credit, so I balance. Okay, here's our last transaction. Uh, where we have um, an owner withdrawal. And just like an owner investment, whenever you're doing something with the owner, you got to draw your circle, you got to figure out, um, first of all, is the business receiving or giving up cash? So in this case, the owner is taking cash away from the business. So the business is giving up cash. So we have the cash in the correct space. Then whatever's the space left over, you put in owner withdrawal or owner investment. So in this case, it's an owner withdrawal. Okay, for cash, we use cash. And for owner withdrawal, uh, we use the drawing account. And um, that's a, a comma drawing. Uh, cash is an asset. And the drawing account is an owner withdrawal type of account. Okay. Um, do we have more or less cash than we did five minutes ago? We paid, the business paid cash out, so there's less in the business checking account, so that's a decrease. Do we have more or less owner withdrawals than we did five minutes ago? We have um, more owner withdrawals. Five minutes ago, we didn't have any owner withdrawals. Now we have one, so there's an increase in owner withdrawals. Now I look up my debits and credits. I have an increase in withdrawals and a decrease in asset. So I look up withdrawals. Do I have an increase? Yes, that's a debit. And I look up assets. And here I have a decrease, so that's the opposite of debit, which is credit. So my increase in withdrawals is a debit. And my decrease in assets is a credit. And yes, I have one debit and one credit. So that matches up. Uh, so now our analyzing sheets are complete. And our next step is to put the numbers onto the T accounts. Now, um, you could have done this along and along, like you could have the very first transaction, as soon as you put in, oops, the first transaction as soon as you put in the debit and credit you could have gone immediately to the T accounts and put the numbers in and then the second transaction and immediately go to the T accounts and put the transact the numbers in okay but in our case uh, um, we just went ahead and got all of our transactions on our on our transaction sheets and now we can go back and put the numbers in um, and so it would be helpful if we know the numbers. And um, okay. So on this first one was two thousand dollars. The second one was twelve hundred. Third one was 900. Here's where we made a payment of 300. We'll 
sold services for 500 we paid rent for 200 we paid the phone for 50 we sold services on account for 600 We bought supplies uh, for 80. We bought an insurance policy for 200. We received cash from previous customers of 570. Here we have our numbers on this one already for our three parts. Here we have wages. Uh, Six fifty. And here the cash part, because I split this up into two parts. The cash part was 430 and then here in the next sheet the part of a on account sales on account was 620 and then the owner withdrawal was 150 okay so um, now we have our amounts another thing you might want to do we don't need this right now we would need it for uh, chapter four next week um, and you, what you'll need is the date so um, that would be nice to also just uh, type the date in on each one of these so uh, that when we get to chapter four you have everything you need would be right here on these analyzing sheets and uh, you don't have to go back and forth to anywhere else